Hi everyone, welcome to uh, a video showing off my implementation of a virtual texture system. First of all, uh, I just point out that the frame rate up the top is not the frame rate I normally get. The um, video capture software uh, really sl uh, slows down the frame rate. It can easily get 120, 200 frames a second. Um, when it's not capturing. And this also affects the loading of the pages, but uh, yeah, anyone who knows me knows I'm obsessed with frame rate. Uh, so what is a virtual texture? Um, traditionally, when someone models a world like this, uh, they would have a lot of uh, texture constraints put on them just because um, you know consoles and PCs don't have unlimited memory. So you can see here, and in this case, you know, a lot of these crates use the same uh, texture. Uh, it's the same poster on uh, on all these. Um, it's a bit hard to see here, but the ground is just a, a tiling texture. Um, like this ship here uh, has the same texture as that ship over there and this other one over here. Uh, so it's just a lot of... Um, repeating, like efficiently using the same memory over and over again uh, and artists are getting quite good at it. Um, and also they would uh, often uh, for lighting games would use quite low res light map, well lower res than um, than uh, the texture density of uh, all the textures they've used. So what would be great if you could just have one massive big texture that just covered this whole world and then every single pixel could be different from every other pixel so like you could have a s different pixel on every single uh, uh, sorry a different texture on every single crate um, you know you could have a ground plane that that doesn't repeat like even these you know those buildings way off in the distance here could be totally uniquely textured um, uh, those posters over there like every single poster could be different and it, it just wouldn't matter um, you could even try and get tricky and um, procedurally generate to say like the ground texture or something um, you could uh, do all sorts of things and in this case um, what I've done is baked out some lighting so like every pixel is lit differently from every other pixel although <laughs> the lighting I've done is pretty simple it's just like one direct lighting with some um, some ambient occlusion I baked out but it, even in this it, it still looks pretty good because you know it's at the same res as everything else um, but the trouble with this is say for this uh, I've used here is a 16k by 16k texture wrapped over the whole world that comes out to about 1.4 gig um, which you know for comparison your Xbox and uh, PS3 only have um, half a gig in memory and obviously you can't use all that for texturing and even if you did get a video card that had um, that much texture data which there probably is now um, like there's limits on the API like DirectX 9 will only let you have a, a maximum of uh, 8k by 8k texture but the, the saving grace is that you can't see every pixel at, at any given time like if we're looking here for a start we can only see 50% of the pixels because 50% are pointing away from us and some of them are off screen uh, some of them are occluded by other things so we actually don't need the whole um, uh, whole 1.4 gigabytes of texture loaded at any one time um, so what we can do is take this massive texture split it up into pages in this case I've used uh, 256 by 256 uh, pixel pages and then just stream in what we can see um, so 
uh, the first problem we have to solve is or how do we know what we can see um, so what you can do is render the world uh, into uh, a render target like this here with this shader that just um, show uh, has each page um, encoded in the in the color of each pixel so we can render this out then take this data on the CPU run over it and then figure out what tiles we need um, which is easy enough so but then we have our list of uh, pages we have to stream them in and upload them to the video card so we have a texture like this here um, this is actually an 8k by 8k texture and you can s it's probably a bit hard to see I can make it full screen each one of these is a, an, a page uh, tile so you can see as we fly around different pages are streamed in and if you notice in the world um, you might even see them pop in it's a bit hard I might I'll tweak up the MIP by so it has to load a bit more and you can sort of see you can see them load in there you go if I if I include everything and then pop back out everything you can see everything load in um, yep so then once we've got this texture here um, with all our pages in it then we just need um, uh, another texture to show the GPU where to look so uh, like when it's rendering it, it can say oh yep yeah, this this it'll, it'll lay this texture over it and it'll go oh yep yeah, this this here points to this page here and then with some simple maths in the shader we read this texture, decode it, and which will point into a texture page here, which then we can use to to render the uh, render the world. This shader is pretty simple, as I said, just uh, two texture reads and some ALU. Um, it's very simple. This one, um, I'm sh I haven't profiled it, but I'm sure it'd be either rock bound or um, or texture bound like that you could stick a lot more ALU in there you could you know um, uh, you know add add specular highlights reflections you know anything you wanted um, there there's no problem with performance like this thing runs at e easy 120 frames a second in this demo on this on this PC the other big advantage is is because we've only got two two textures and they're both like every every uh, everything's rendered with just those two textures we don't have to chop the world up into materials so you could have one draw call draw the whole environment or what you'd probably really end up doing is just chopping up just for viz like you would instead of chopping for material and then trying to group those materials so they you know in clumps so they and maybe then merge and, f and all messing around with all that you would just chop the world into nice viz chunks um, obviously um, to get rid of any uh, artifacts from uh, streaming you could uh, obviously compress these pages at the moment uh, I'm not I'm not compressing them at all these are just raw TGAs loaded in um, and you can see like it's pretty solid like um, you can just notice and some popped in um, the other thing is you could do a lot smarter uh, algorithms for for caching like which tiles to throw away like you can see here like if I include everything and then pop back out like I'm not doing a very good job of preserving uh, what tiles are needed um, you could cache th do all sorts of caching schemes but uh, yeah it's I quite like this already and uh, I haven't haven't done much to speed that up so the other thing you could do it be draw straight into uh, these uh, pages so 
uh, let's look I have a simple little demo here uh, f like you have to forgive my bad uh, a coder art here but you know we could just render these uh, bullet holes so what I'm doing here it'd be hard to see but you know I, f I find which uh, tile I have to render into and just render those bullet holes straight into this to these uh, to the right page and then here there's like zero uh, cost once they're rendered into that page like these are not uh, you know extra polys uh, for each decal these these now uh, just written straight into that texture data and uh, so you know you could you know during a game you can you know shoot up the world or do whatever of course if that page got flushed out and then you come back you'd have to rest restore these but um, it'd be the same same cost as if you were renting them into the world every frame but you'd only do it once and if you're worried about spiking you know you could drag it over a few frames or, or whatever so the other thing is um, you could uh, you know an artist can sit here and uh, just touch up the world um, so if you look here like I've got some decals you could splat down um, put you know cracks cracks everywhere you know uh, what do we got we can paint paint some more more shadow in here like you know sky's the limit um yeah i i think this this is really uh exciting and i can't wait to play with this more um but um if you've uh f listened this far you might might want to check out my blog i've got more information on you know uh, how i've got this far and uh, steps along the way I've done and, and things I've found out and, and things I'd like to do uh, that's um, a blog's called Fragment Bound but I'll put a link to that in the notes um, I'd like to thank you for, for watching this far thank you very much